to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday episode of the show, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Good morning. Good afternoon. Just covering our Goodbye, Raheem Moser. (laughs) Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The, uh, he burns, he burned too bright last year. Maybe, maybe. (laughs) I mean, I look, uh, Raheem Moser is not somebody unfamiliar with, uh, practice, Missing practice and being banged up, and we'll see. We'll see what happens. We got news to talk about. I have news at the top to talk about because out of over twenty thousand ah, people, yes. Oh my gosh, this is insane. I mean, twenty thousand people are in the Mega Bowl right now, and if you don't know what that is, that is the uh, largest fantasy football league in the world. Uh, it is comprised of Foot Clan supporters, and. Week one is in the books, and there. Are, if you go to megalobowl.com, you can see the standings. We update them every week. The winner gets a spot in our listener league and also really the pride of beating over 20,000 people at something. And currently, after one week, uncomprehendable, the Falcon is number the, one. The Falcon dump <laughs> is number one Which right is his now. team name, the Falcon dump. He ends up with 198 points in week one. Number one in the league. Do you have any comments for the Foot Clan Falcon? Get bodied, Foot Clan. Yeah. Oh, man. Get you... bodied. And that is, I approve that message. Yeah. I mean, you must uh, sit in and listen to every one of these shows or something. Not everyone. That's true. <laughs> um, Impressive. Impressive. So uh, the Megalobowl standings, we often shout out who's in the lead. And unfortunately, we have to shout <laughs> out the Falcon what himself. What a world. Uh, congratulations. That's pretty impressive. Um, we've got hungry for more on the show today. A pretty fun, quick question that Mike came up with for us. And, um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's it. The foot clan, you can become a member, join the foot.com. The response yesterday to the ultimate dashboard and the fact that you get custom waivers, overwhelming. And so we are we we're doing some work today to to patch up a few bugs that you guys have pointed out with uh, I think specifically Yahoo leagues syncing with Yahoo it works most of the time if you have an issue with that just delete your team add it again it should work but we're working on the ultimate dashboard it gives you a uh, the ability to see an optimized lineup based on our projections it gives you spot starts based on your actual waiver wire. It gives you waiver wire rankings based on your actual league, and it gives you a custom news feed for your team, and we're adding more stuff in the future. You can check all that out at jointhefoot.com. Mike, why don't you uh, why don't you read the quick question, bro? Right? I am so <laughs> locked. Yeah. I'm not, I didn't hear a uh, single no, word. That we weren't you listening just said. to anything you said. Waivers Wait, have what, run. What happened? Waivers are running, oh. and in, uh, in the league we're playing with, Rich Eisen. Andy's over here dropping massive amounts of did money. I, did I get Isaiah? Uh, you, yeah, you got him. Yeah. I raised my bid over there like three times. Was that a mistake? Uh, let's see. Uh, the second highest bid was fifteen, and yours was eighty-one. So, what yeah, the- it was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> the the Falcon is dying over there. You raised it three times. Oh, that's a dump. <laughs> oh man. I don't dump have now, not later. I don't have a tight end in that league. <laughs> I feel like my team is stacked in oh, that league. Oh man. It was a situation where again, uh, you know, these are contextual. Isaiah likely went for thirty five. What league is that, Kyle? That's our main Ours. league of record. Okay. Okay. Um that's interesting. Not bad. Why why did I not What did okay. you know? Demarcus Robinson. I, I don't understand why I didn't get him in that league. You were probably out of fab. <laughs> I guess. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I made the shot. I love my team in, in uh in our Rich Eisen league and I, I needed a tight end and I guess I got him. All right. We uh we are have a quick question, Mike. You were gonna read it before you distract us with waiting. Okay, hold on. I gotta lock back into the show here, boys, because 
Waiver morning is a thing, and then week one well, waiver morning, week even one, more of a thing. Waiver morning when your most important league, your roster from top to bottom is in shambles. I had to know what happened. But anyways, back to the show. Back to all y'all. <laughs> back to the, to the millions of you. Uh, so we just – oh, it's week one. or it, We're heading to week two. We've rounded up week one, and – Victory laps. Oh, no. What are you remembering? Not that I'm overspending everywhere. Go on. <laughs> Go on. Victory laps. It's a part of fantasy football, and it's always, you know, take it easy on your victory laps. But I wanted to, you know, bring forth a take from the off season where you, after week one you, you think this is going pretty good. I like, that the, I like the direction this is on. Or a take that you had in the off season that you go, oh, Oh man, week one made that take look really, really bad, and and it's made it feel so bad that you're like, I think I have to immediately change my opinion on that. Which we we try to tell people like, we're we're working as hard as possible to get a majority of things right, but uh, weird things happen in football. There's always the going to be right and wrong every year. So stay water. Yeah, stay water and with new information, be willing to change your opinion. Sometimes week one information comes in and it doesn't drastically change what you thought about in the offseason. You say, no, I'm still going to hold on to that opinion and I'm going to get more information. But a couple things happened in week one where you go, uh, yeah, that that was wrong, which well, let, let's, we'll start there. We'll start. We'll and, start with things that we're feeling shaky yeah, about. Yeah, my, my week one, my preseason take where I'm already just like, okay, we're, we'll, we'll burn that thing to the ground. Joe Mixon looked unbelievably good. My argument against Joe Mixon has always been his inefficiency, which I've watched Joe Mixon for years be that guy. And it, I mean, it hasn't mattered for fantasy football because he's gotten the ball so, so much for the Cincinnati Bengals, who are frequently a high-powered offense. Joe Mixon is getting checkdowns all the time. I was concerned, will those come through? I mean, I still – he had three targets, so that part is TBD – but he got 30 carries, 30 carries, tying a career high, and he looked awesome. That so like that's that's the, that's where I'm taking the L is I don't remember ever watching Joe Mixon in his career. I mean he's old. He's been in the league forever. That was, I think that that was the best I can remember Joe Mixon looking in a very very long time. When you look that good and you have that kind of utilization yeah. where he was that involved for a good offense, you know fantasy is going to work. I mean that's that's already you know you take you take an L or you take a, a W depending on what you thought of Mixon because it's 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 a win this year. Joe Mixon, can he finish RB one? I don't think he can finish RB one. He uh, he had three targets. Yeah, I we need, in the game. we still would need that to go up, but. Like top ten with this utilization on this offense, that's easy. Yeah, that seems top, a lock. Top five, quite possibly. Uh, obviously, if, I'm, it, if it keeps up, I'm feeling shaky about Kyron's workload situation and whether he gets, if he is a part of a committee or not. Um, week one, twenty one opportunities, ninety percent of the carries, one hundred percent of the targets, ran the most routes among all running backs. That's caught, huge. Caught the punts. Uh, caught the punts. Uh, Kyron in week one, you know, I, I'm holding judgment a little bit because Sean McVay came out after he the did. game and said that's he not did. what we wanted to do. I also thought, you know, during the game that if you're down in, on the road in week one in a playoff atmosphere, you're not putting in a rookie in Blake Corum and you're probably not taking Kyron off the field. So we'll have to see. I mean, is this team going to have a, a good enough defense where they're not in this position more often than not where they can't afford. Like, it's about whether you can afford to rotate Kyron, not whether you want to. And so far through week one, uh, you know, the idea of him not being a workhorse was disproven. Yeah, I, I definitely, as as the one that has been a staunch believer that he will retain his workhorse status, this will be the highest utilization of the season. Like, this was outrageous. That's not, what, you know, that he's he's going to be pulled back a little bit, but he will still be a workhorse. Uh, for For me... My loss, and I'm willing to do it uh, right off the bat, like rip the Band-Aid off, and I am a convert immediately from what I saw week Wow. One. Okay. Um, I, I am and have always been an anti-rookie tight end 
player. And it and it has That's what your tattoos say. That has worked for me in literally every situation in the history of my fantasy football except for once, and it was last year's Sam Laporta. Well, it's about to be twice because Brock Bowers one, uh, he's awesome. There's uh, all yeah, my we, anti, we that. all my anti, you know, rookie tight end for fantasy things. That has nothing to do with the talent of the player. That has to do with the situation. What rookie tight ends come into. Also, he was coming into a place where they had a second round tight end from last year, and they've got Devonte Adams and a bad offense. And I don't know if I could trust this offensive scheme. And then what happened? He had. Eight targets was used in the juicy parts of the field, a 25% target share. I, I, I mean, he was who we're all hoping he develops into, but he was that way in week one. So I'm I'm in. If Like I, I mentioned this on the waiver show yesterday. If Brock Bowers was on the waivers, that's a guy I would have dropped 80 fab for because I think he's got, you know, game-breaking ability. I just did not think he would have the utilization. And if, if he has it in week one, he should have it this season. He was he was uh, my guy finalist, if you remember for uh, for the show. So nice week one. Um, how about you know maybe it's not a full victory lap, but what do you th feel like you've gotten right so far after one week? Uh, I'll hop in because it's Ky Kyron is kind of a part of this. Um, on the bust episode, I talked about Mar Marvin Harrison, but in truth, uh, I don't even know who that guy is. <laughs> It was neither, neither does team. Kyler. Yeah, uh, on that that argument actually developed a little bit more from Marv. I felt like the wide receivers at the beginning of the second round were bad picks. They were, but compared to the running backs, that the 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 Marvin Harrison, the Drake London, the Devontae Adams, the guys, the Chris Olaves, the guys that were there versus the Gibbs, the Kyron, the Saquon, the running backs that were there. It just felt like you had giant question marks. Or you had really good opportunities. I mean, you so, can even throw Garrett Wilson into that mix 100%. after week one. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I feel good that we, you know, talked about that strategy, and and I think a lot of the the Foot Clan ended up with Saquon and Kyron and Gibbs and those guys. All right, Mike, how are you feeling? So over the off season, I was talking about the the this deeper dive that I had done on running backs who are not drafted in the top twenty four, and trying to find the edge of which which teams because there's you know over eight teams uh on average there's a not a top 24 running back drafted from that team yet we get a handful of guys from those teams to finish what is the edge that we can identify to try to get those guys and it was the the Bengals the Chargers and the Cowboys I think the Cowboys one is still TBD Zeke is currently the leader I I can't argue with that but it was it was a pretty close timeshare, and the other ones, or the the Chargers one was a timeshare, absolutely. But Dobbins looked like the guy; like he had three targets. And I know I just said that's not enough for Mixon, but this is a different caliber of a player, and he was the one who actually had juice. He got stopped at the line a lot, but then he had the two humongous runs where Gus Edwards did really nothing uh, with his utilization. And like, he, I mean, yes, Gus is is lining up against really heavy boxes, but they couldn't get anything done with Gus Edwards, and J.K. Dobbins was the one who got it done. And then Zach Moss of the Bengals. It was is it Zach Moss? Is it Chase Brown? It is at least after Week One. It is Zach Moss. This wasn't the utilization you hoped for. It was only thirteen opportunities, but two carries inside the ten. He had sixty-five percent of the snaps. He saw almost thirty percent of the entire workload for the Bengals. Like I mean, that's. You know, team carries plus targets, 29%. Like, that's – those are outrageously good numbers. The team did not run a lot. They fully abandoned the run, and I think that they will balance that out a little bit more. And right now it looks like Zach Moss is the big winner over Chase Brown. Yeah, when you identified those three teams as the running back timeshares to target late, you didn't even say, you know, it is Zach Moss or it no, is it, Brown. Yeah, it's it was, just take a shot on one of those guys, and all three of those teams had the rushing touchdown this week. And when you when you you know get back at the end of the year, and you go, oh, this guy snuck into the top twenty four. It's because they had enough touchdowns. I had a couple quick bullet point things from week one. Obviously, Cooper Cup was fantasy MVP. He looked great before Puka left. He looked better after, and he's yeah. going to be a top tier guy. Tony Pollard winning the uh, the, the kind of week one timeshare situation. I felt like that was the 
Swift Gainwell was kind of the offseason comparison I used and you know whether that holds up or not the team did come out and say they were kind of hot handing it but Pollard looked a lot better and then Cincinnati being bad yeah uh, that they were dead last in my prediction for the division which did not go over well with Cincinnati fans but in week one they looked pretty bad that was I mean that was the worst loss of the week Mm -hmm. Right, like the Bengals. That losing. was a survivor pool destroyer. The Bengals losing to the team that had by far the highest odds to be the worst team in the NFL, and you're a team that in Cincinnati, in, yeah, at home, and you're a team that has Super Bowl aspirations. That's a devastating loss. They can bounce back, but uh, Joe Burrow in these week ones is just he's just killing us, <laughs> absolutely yeah. killing us. Yeah, yeah, he he's a slow starter. It seems. All right, let's jump in. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. I know it's a cliche, but the any given Sunday thing is just always so true in the NFL. And I do chuckle at the idea that I think the number is 45% of people tried to just get their survivor pools off the ground <laughs> with an easy, obvious oh, win and um, goodbye. All right, Hungry for More, uh, if you're not familiar with this segment, it is a rising stars type of segment. We're looking at players that we've seen some flashes of in week one, had some nibbles. Now we want a little bit more. For me, Jamison Williams, mm -hmm. wide receiver yeah, absolutely. of the Detroit Lions. It has been a fun discussion on the show. I would love to rub Kyle's nose in... <laughs> Jamison Williams production you, all year you kinda, long. Oh, so you you, you kind of did on on a one week, yeah, yeah, one week. But I am He's I, hungry for more. I Mike. Have, <laughs> make no mistake, I have sent some trade offers out with Jamison Williams leaving my roster, knowing that taking advantage of anybody that wants to believe that you've got a tier one type of guy, um, you know, th I'm not talking about giving him away. I was going hard in the paint after big guys, but I want to see more of what the utilization was for Jamison Williams. In particular, went back through, watched all the targets again this morning, was 5 for 1, 21 and 1. If they use him, if Ben Johnson uses him the way they used him in week one, Jameson's a thing this year. Done. Yeah, Over. for sure. You can't. I, to me, this was. Remember how we looked at Thursday Night Football and we're like, Rashi Rice, they just run the same play and it's unstoppable? They can do that with JMO. If they run him on crossers, if they run him on the, you know, get him into space and let him run. I mean, the plays were he, – he's too fast. He's he too is, fast. He is lightning. And and if you really think back about the career, the problem has been that he's been on the field and hasn't shown it. But really, his rookie season, he was coming off the ACL. You know, he, so he missed uh, the, the majority of it. Then he was suspended going into last year, and this was an offense that was so darn good. They did not need him. They did not need to stop midseason when they get him back and go, okay, how are we going to get him involved? Then they let wide receivers go in the offseason, and they certainly seem like they designed plays for JMO. So, I, man, I'm, I think it's going to happen. I think, I think I'm he's pretty gonna excited be, about it. I think he's going to be good. I tend to agree. I'm more on the, the side of excitement. Something that we haven't talked about, though. I think we're in the hungry for more. Sorry, I'm sidetracking us. What's the fallout for the Lions? Like, if, if if he's this utilized, this, this is a high T team that had that last year. It was very focused. It was Amon Ra, it was Sam Laporta, and it was Jameer Gibbs. What now happens to this to these fantasy players if Jamison Williams is all of a sudden an eight target guy? Uh, I wanted to take a quick look here. Josh Reynolds last season just forty for six oh eight. So that is not a bar that. Is very high in yeah, terms Jameson's of. Yeah, Jameson's on his way. Yeah, to that. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, he's he should surpass that if he's utilized like this, which will have an impact on Laporta and Amon Ra. Yeah, I mean, you saw it in Week One, right? You 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 can't throw to two players at once, and Amon Ra had his first down game in, game in forever, and Laporta wasn't anything great either. So yeah, uh, I think if Jamison Williams has a has a true breakout, it will siphon a few targets away. Uh, but it could be good for the run game to open. You know, when you when you're opening up the passing. Uh, lightening up the boxes, getting down the field for more touchdown opportunities. I, I don't lightning the boxes like there's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what well, I. Well, lightning doesn't make sense, but thank you. That's thunder. <laughs> Do you ever been hit by lightning, Mike? 
Uh, no. You're, you're, you'll, no. Hear, you'll hear something. You'll make a sound. <laughs> you'll hear something. All right, Jason. I, I did not see this name in here yet. So, um, so it I, brings me great joy. I am hungry for more Keon Coleman. He had yep. such a great, quiet week. The The Bills didn't throw the ball much. Um, I mean, they. Josh Allen completed five passes in the first half. Five passes. Josh Allen. You know, they, they, they want to run the ball more. We, we saw this with Brady. But we also know at the end of the year, you're going to have Josh Allen at 4,000 passing yards. Like, he's he's going to end up there. He always does. He's usually 4,500 passing yards. And if you look at the metrics behind the scenes on Keon Coleman, he, he, he did everything you wanted. Who had the most snaps with wide receivers? He did. Who had the most targets at wide receivers? He did. The most yards? He did. He led this team. Who's the most talented wide receiver they have by far? By far, Keon Coleman is. And so the fact that week one, there were so many questions about, you know, I remember early in the offseason, it was like, is he having trouble learning the playbook? He's only going to be in one spot. They used him all over the place. He had five targets in this game. He had an underneath route that was trailing, uh, you know, 12 yards on a first down. He was Did you get to go watch all these by, yes. the, by chance? Yeah, yes. I, I was really impressed. Yeah, I mean, he they isolated him on the right side for his next target. He sat in a zone, which was my favorite one, uh, sat really nicely in the zone uh, on his third target. He got a a, a, a deep one-on-one -on -one ball on his fourth target, which he caught. That, that's like his specialty for 28 yards. And then the next target was an end zone target. So it's like the utilization was there. The talent is there. This is a highly drafted rookie wide receiver who on week one was, you know, there was all these questions. And in fact, at the very, very beginning of the game, it was like, oh, is this going to be Mac Hollins? Like, you know, yeah, you, you had yeah, these yeah, questions yeah. of, Who's going to be the well, wide it wasn't, receiver? It wasn't Curtis Samuel. No. And in this game, it wasn't Dalton Kincaid either. But I think Coleman and Kincaid are by lows based on what happened in week one. Yes. And look, when a rookie wide receiver does something in, of any note and four for 51 in your first professional game, that is of note, uh, especially when you were drafted, uh, drafted later, I would be – a pretty aggressive with him and then my uh hungry for more it's the whole team it's it's the tampa bay buccaneers what is the actual truth about this team is chris godwin back because he was eight for 89 with a touchdown 55 percent of his snaps were in the slot and look it, he is a player who has been good in his career we were excited but hesitant about the whole offseason news about the him moving back to the slot because he was he was taken out of it last year and mm -hmm. and it his production went down so that that's a question I mean Baker can he keep it up absolutely or, or like that's a question and then Jalen McMillan third round rookie wide receiver a full time starter immediately he only had one catch it was a thirty two yard touchdown and there was another play where. I'm trying to remember, like it was. I think Baker just missed him. He had a bad drop, or oh, it was a drop. Yeah, he okay, had a bad okay. drop I to start remember. his career. A la right, what we right. saw from Harrison too. Yeah, I, I couldn't recall whose fault it was, but it was, it was a touchdown. Like, it, it's a drop that sucks. It's a it's a young kid out there getting his first you know action in the NFL. It happens, but the fact that he had broken free and could have scored two times in this two big touchdowns in this game is McMillan. A, a a guy who's going to pop up here as is going to be a fantasy starter. He ran the most routes on the team. That could be a production or a product of game script because they were destroying Washington. It's, but this Bucks team overall, it's, it's you could exciting. be hungry for more of what you saw from the Bucks across the board. Every single player on that roster, and you know it was easy to dismiss some of the Saints' uh, performance in Week One because of Carolina. We're going to find out whether it was worthy to, you know. Is this the pre prescription for Tampa or just a product of playing a bad defense? Yeah. But I'm hungry for more of Godwin for sure. McMillan, it's neat to have a younger player with the chance to emerge. And then ho-hum, Mike Evans. <laughs> Two more touchdowns. We just do what we do. And that first touchdown was – like, he had – Go go was, gadget extendable it arms. Was first I, ballot he, stuff. He it was first ballot arms. He, he is – going to get into the Hall of Fame right away on that second ballot. I mean, ah. when that second ballot comes around, people are going to be like, yep, I've been waiting for this one. But if he if he does put up a 36-touchdown season based first, on the current if pace. He, if he puts up a 36-touchdown 
season, you'll change your mind. I will one hundred percent change. That mind. was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. All right, that was hungry for more, presented by Uber Eats. Get game day deals all season long only on Uber Eats, official on demand food delivery partner of the NFL. Order now. We're going to take a break. Come back with some news. Well, we got big news to talk about, so let's jump in. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Let's start with the Thursday night updates that we have, and we're previewing that game today as well. But Raheem Moster has been ruled out for Thursday's game against the Bills. Devon Achan, uh, both Moster and Achan had been marked as uh, – did not practice for the two pretend practices. A-chan will be a game-time decision. Mike McDaniel said we'll see. He was getting some work in today. Light, he, lighter, was, but he's actually practicing, so it would seem like he will play. Cameron Wolf on ESPN said that they watched him go through all the running back drills and reps, including changing direction, catching passes on his ankle, no red jersey, or clear visual limitations from the media viewing, and I need that, Mike. I need, need this quote. I need... I, I think you know what I'm hungry play. for. I'm <laughs> hungry for more Devon Achan. The question will be, if he's active, what is the utilization of Jeff Wilson Jr. and Jalen Wright, who will be active in this game because he was inactive in Week One, yep. but with Mostert out, you know the team likes to use multiple backs. Um, Achan is coming off of an injury, and I wouldn't have expected him to get everything anyways. So then what do you do with those other two guys and how risky is the start of HN if cool. you know that a, you know this is a situation where you could see it could be the uh, T. Higgins. Like you could have some opportunity and an in, a re-injury and you could be sad, but at the same time HN represents such incredible upside. How do you not play him? Yeah, the fact that it's an ankle – like I would be much more concerned if it was a – tissue issue of of reaggravation you know obviously you can get your ankle rolled up on again um but if if they tape the ankle and he and it's medically fine for him to play I'm not scared about playing him in that situation I think the real question is who do you like whether he's there or not there will be value to either Jeff Wilson or Jalen Wright and you've got to figure out which one of those two to start Wright has far more juice, and in this offense, you could see one of those big explosive plays. But I would expect right now, I would expect Jeff Wilson to be the Raheem Mostert role. He was active in week one, and he has been a real big part of this team and this running back room this offseason. They they give out these special jerseys um, for the best player in practice through their camp. I remember a day that Achan got it, and I went back and I looked at the log of everyone that got it. And one of the only players to get it twice was Jeff Wilson. So he's coming off of an incredible camp. I am in the the boat of Jeff Wilson is the the two here. Talk uh, about an island game with trust. Trusting the rookie doesn't seem like the best choice I, for this team. I am on the side of complete nervousness about every single one of those players. I think Achan will play. And if like, if I have HN, I'm playing him. So I guess I, I'm not trying to spook people off of playing HN. I would, I would do that. But Jeff Wilson played special teams in Week One. Like, is that why he was active? I mean, he got 15 percent of the snaps, um, and I think he got some touches because of the injuries that HN and Mostert had. You know, HN was a healthy scratch last year, Week One. So it, like. Both both Jeff Wilson and Jalen Wright are worthy pickups should somehow they be left on your, your waiver. But the order of how the, the, the touches it's going to go, I think you're going to be holding your breath no matter who you're playing from that Dolphins backfield. Ian Rappaport came out yesterday, uh, said that Christian McCaffrey is a long shot to play in week two. Where's the reporting before week one? Well, I mean, the reporting was uh, the fact that he had been hurt five weeks ago and was not seen in preseason and practiced in a limited capacity. But and we were also getting the reports from beat reporters was, no, he's going to play. Yeah, he's going to be like, fine. He's this, fine. There was, there, there was, you know, hesitancy from the coaching staff. If you remember that, we had the, the weird quote, quote from Shanahan like, dude, please clear this up. But 
all the reporters that I saw were saying, no, he's going to, he will play. I offered Jason a trade this morning in <laughs> Dynasty. I offered him Christian McCaffrey and a first round rookie pick for Brees Hall. Oh, I would have turned that down. Yeah, I'm easily. sure he'll turn it down. <laughs> but the the worry is that you're going to have a lingering injury from McCaffrey. Now, I think when push comes to shove over the course of the year, McCaffrey will get back. It's Achilles tendonitis and a calf strain that does not lead to tearing your Achilles in any – there's no correlation between Achilles tendonitis, which is a – there's a level of pain tolerance that goes along with that. They have the ability to put Jordan Mason in the lineup to run Debo Samuel as a running back and be fine. Jordan Mason could be what has changed this. Mm -hmm. But this of, is – Of like if Jordan Mason went out there and fell on his face, maybe they're like, hey, Christian, it, we, we need you to get back in there. But Jordan Mason was so awesome that maybe they feel like let's let's just rest Christian McCaffrey. I mean, it's – This is a Super Bowl – Yes, a Super they, Bowl they, 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 they only sure. have one goal. Their goal is not to make the playoffs. Their goal is to win a Super Bowl. And so, yeah, if I'm them and Jordan Mason is uh, has the hot hand and is looking good, I would I would rest McCaffrey as long as I could. McCaffrey could have played, according to David Lombardi of the Athletic, if yeah. it was a playoff. If it was game. a playoff game, which they play Minnesota. Yeah, they they play on the road against the Vikings this week. I mean, I think McCa I, I know McCaffrey. McCaffrey wants to play. He, is, yes. he does not want to miss one ounce. He doesn't want to baby this injury. He thinks he can play. Uh, when he thinks he can play, he's going to play. I mean, he's going to – he's earned that with this team. So, Which I did – I read a blurb of that Minnesota um, installed new turf. I, I didn't dive into it, but, like, that could factor into this decision as well. So, it, right now, Jordan Mason's a great start. If your waivers went through and you got him, he's a great start. Congratulations. If Christian McCaffrey is active, he's a great start mm -hmm. this week. And, and and it could be longer. Right now it's saying a long shot to play this week, but he could play if it's the playoffs. I think this is when it matters. The week after Minnesota, they're on the road in division against the Rams. That is a game where, you know, that's that's more of the playoff environment. Very, very, very important win. Yeah, yep. David Njoku ruled out for week two. The team is uh, hosting Irv Smith Jr. and Jeff Swaim to the practice squad right now. Jason, you had Njoku, right? Yes. Did you? What did you end up? Doing I had with him? to. I had to hold on to him because he wasn't ruled out. He wasn't marked <laughs> out. I had to hold on to him and hope that I did not have to wait until Sunday to be able to put him in my okay. IR. What? So when I saw that he was ruled out, I was like, "Yes, okay. baby!" I they at least gave you it now, but they did not give it to you before. What did you? Ran. What did you do at tight end? I ended up picking up Dallas Goddard, which I you did not win the likely sweepstakes. I did you, not win the likely sweepstakes. I went. Uh, you went pretty soft. Well, I didn't go eighty one. <laughs> 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 I mean, yeah. Uh, that is one league, by the way. <laughs> I am in nine leagues. I could have bid on a likely in all of them, and I did. Nothing close oh, to that. Man. That league exclusively, <laughs> I feel naked at tight end, and I wanted him. So this, you got him. <laughs> yeah, it, it, for for me, when I'm looking it's at last the player, you'll get the matchups and the fact that That's it's fine. a it's a temporary thing. I think I'm going to miss Najoku for Happened three to weeks. Happened dumps early, guys. You don't know what a dump is. <laughs> All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. <laughs> Thursday night breakdown. The Buffalo Bills at 1 and 0 take on the Miami Dolphins who are also 1 and 0. The DK Sportsbook line Miami minus 2 and a half, the over under is 49 beautiful Thursday night points that I totally don't believe in. And um <laughs> that gives an implied point total of 26 to Miami and uh 23 to Buffalo. Both teams were down big in week one. Both teams came back. They were both down 17-3. to three. They both won their matchups. Um, you know, overcoming Jacksonville, that's what Miami did at home, and then Buffalo at home against Arizona. Last year, they had two matchups. Uh, in week four, Buffalo won 48-20. That would have hit the over. And then in week 18, Buffalo won 21-14. That would not. Yeah. So, you know, in week one, I felt like, both teams were very slow starters on offense. That was obvious. I think the Miami one was more surprising uh, just because, you know, Buffalo, I think we expected some of the 
you know, new offensive pieces to come along slower, whereas Miami was running back what they had and they still didn't get it done until late. But this is a fun Thursday night matchup. I mean, I think that's the headline. Josh Allen's going to play. And uh, the reason I say that is because he's been dealing with an injury to his non-throwing hand. No concerns here for either of you. No. No. I mean, I, I I hope he doesn't get hit in the hand, but in terms of he's going to play and he should play a full game and, and it should be full fantasy strength, Josh Allen. Tua in week one, uh, you know, he had a big play to Tyreek, missed him on another one. We know that the running back room might be, you know, thinned out from a dependency standpoint. Like at the end of the day, you're not getting as much production if Devon Achan isn't getting as many snaps if Mostert's not there. So there's the possibility that this is even more of a pass-heavy offense. I know Malik Washington's not practicing, but uh, Jalen Waddle managed to <laughs> return to the game. <laughs> Jalen I mean, Waddle managed to be marked out on uh, fantasy platforms and then score more points. Did he? Yeah. he yeah, was sleeper he marked was, him out? It, yeah, the, he was actually marked out. And I think it was wasn't on the field. sleeper, too. No, it was, it was just reported that he was out, uh, I believe, with oh, the concussion. concussion. Yeah. And then he played the game, which is called a waddle. Yeah. I mean, that know, is what just, he does. He finds a, a way <laughs> to get injured every game but play. Still play through. And I expect if him you to do call, it again. If you call somebody for, like, a dinner party and you cancel and then you still show up, that's a waddle. Yeah. Oh, that's sure. what that is. Yeah. Because they declared you out. They they cleared the place. <laughs> they cleared the plates off, and then you were like, where's my food? Get out the way. I mean, he is like, it's every game. Yeah. This is. But he was five for 109, baby. Do, do you, that do was you, good. Do you think there's anything with the Dolphins? Like, I feel like they surprise people with their system and their speed. They kind of, they, they can really just shock a defense. But in this division, like, Buffalo, I feel like, has their number um, a little bit. They beat them both times last season. Uh, interesting set. Tua has never finished inside the top 12 as a quarterback against Buffalo, uh, and he's played a lot of games against Buffalo. So, you know, th this is one where I, you know, it's it's nice that it's in Miami for, the, you know, the, your Waddle and your Tyree Kill and all that, and I, I'm not saying that you sit those guys, but I Are worry. Are you streaming quarterback? I I think I think Tua is someone I would I would potentially look at other options. Tua, like if I had Goff, I would play Goff. Okay, so you'd go Goff, Tua, or let's say that's interesting. Uh, Matthew Stafford against the Arizona Cardinals. Oh gosh, I mean I'm playing Tua against uh, over both. Okay, and really? Yeah. yeah. And I mean I'm fine with Goff. Goff's fine. Where where you at? But you? definitely over Stafford. Stafford. Yeah, I would play him over Stafford. Okay, uh, Brock Purdy. I've got Brock Purdy one spot ahead. Okay. Uh, Tyreek and Waddle are easy starts. Uh, the other side, the, the discussion I wanted to get into was what we saw in the field from Dalton Kincaid in week one. Because so many tight ends struggled, we didn't really drill down on a handful of them in terms of are you concerned? You know, Kincaid was one of those guys that I was not personally super concerned about. Jason mentioned five pass attempts in the first half. Hard to be targeted when you throw the ball five total times. Also, when you watch the film, when you go back, you saw the Cardinals focused on Dalton Kincaid, and that makes sense for teams right now when they don't know what Keon Coleman has, how much you use Samuel, what Shakir is going to do. Um, the offense in the passing game, if I was building a defense, it would be to stop Kincaid first until we know what other things are going on. But he was out there. He he was uh, participating in nearly every route. He, only he passed pass blocked, blocked yeah, one, one time. time. I love, love Michael, Michael Keaton. Keaton. <laughs> Uh, and he was seven for 84 against Miami last year. I think Kincaid is just a player you put right into your lineup. And I, I went out and got him this morning. Yeah. And that, that seven for 84, um, in Miami last year was in the Joe Brady version of this offense. That was week 18. So, um, you know, there's some concern of that, but I, I, I like, I like Kincaid. I'm, I'm not, um, too worried about the disappearance of week one. Keon Coleman. Are you comfortable in week two, Jason? I mean, this would be a decision over other clearly startable assets for your team, most likely because of where he was drafted. Yeah, I mean, there are. I mean, obviously, it depends on who you have. Uh, I'm not looking to shove him in my lineup, even though I'm excited from some of the metrics he had. Are you hungry for more that that makes you do it? Uh, yeah. So, like, there are players I would play him over. If you had JSN, 
and you had Keon Coleman, and that's a flex decision. I would play Keon Zay Coleman. Zay Flowers. I would play Flowers. Um, let's go down a tier. Xavier Worthy's great week one. Oh, that's really interesting. On very limited touches. I imagine I'd go Worthy. Yeah, I would. I would go Worthy. What if Hollywood's back? I guess you won't know because you got to play Coleman <laughs> before you find out. Uh, Jamison Williams, you're playing oh, him. Oh, yeah. uh, Christian Kirk, after the dud of week one, would you go uh, roll go, Coleman out there? Yeah, I'd go yeah, Coleman. Yeah, I think I would. That's what I would do too. Um, what about Jaden Reed with with Malik Willis versus oh, Keon Coleman? Oh, goodness gracious. Um, I think I'll still play Reed. I'm going to go Coleman there. All right, one more for you, Jason. Okay. This one's going to be tough. Oh, I already know the name you're going to give me. Maybe. Lad McConkey. Yep, I knew that was the name. Lad McConkey, yes. what would you do? No, th th that is. <laughs> you're doing it now, too? I don't know. Oh, I love it. You're, bo um, you're both banished. I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna go Keon <laughs> Coleman because of the matchup here. Now, Lad gets a, a, the Carolina Panthers, and that sounds good because you're like, oh, it's a bad defense. That is not good. The Chargers are going to be up, and they're going to run the ball all game long. You are not going to have a lot of passing volume usually against the Carolina Panthers. We saw this last year. And they then just, they they're just one lost, good defensive yeah, player. They just lost Derek Brown defensive tackle. Yeah, he's out oh, for the man. season. So, um, yeah, I, I would go Coleman there. All right. Uh, what about the other wideouts? If you were try trying to uh, – Cast the die and have it, it land on just, somebody. Just a, the Khalil Shakir would be the only deep play I would go with. Yeah, I'm, I, I don't, over uh, Matt Collins. Yeah, I would not go anywhere else. And also <laughs> a, a reminder: if you are going to start Keon Coleman, maybe you've got that. He is a flex type of player, but because he's playing on Thursday night football, do not have him in your flex. Put him in your wide receiver spot so that some rare late week injury to whoever your normal wide receivers gives you flexibility. Uh, put your late yeah. game players, your you know the latest games of the week. Put them in your flex. And if you don't want to do like think about it and look at every single player, the ultimate dashboard at jointhefoot.com. You sync your team. We show you your suggested lineup based on projections and based on when players play. So we will move guys around and show you how you should order your lineup. If you want easy mode in terms of setting your lineup every week. Check that out at jointhefoot.com. I'll tell you what, man. When when because I've got like eight leagues this yeah. year. Yeah, it's really nice to just like you think for me. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. So, um, I and we do that for you every day, Jay. Yeah, you do, Mike and I. <laughs> All right, quick break. Back with some mailbag. All right, we know you've got questions, you've got panic mode, you've got uh, start and sit decisions, and we've got answers. So let's jump in. Mailbag. Mailbag. Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, Mike. Yeah. We're jumping in. If you have a question, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can click that submitted question button. You can dial our voicemail hotline, 302 464 TFFB, if you'd like, and we're going to turn to a voicemail to kick it off. Hey, Ballers, this is EJ from Florida. I love the show. Quick waiver question. Somebody in my league dropped Malik Neighbors, 12-team PPR. Is this a full fab dump, or yes. does it matter on who I have? That's nope. Right. That's, love the show. Bye. That's, that's all of it. That's all of it. You're going to go 100? I would go 100. I would go 100. Actually, I genuinely would not. I would try to make a trade if you've got fab trading in your league. <laughs> For so a dollar, could go even more? so I could go one on one and assure that I get him. One, I mean, the players like Malik Neighbors should never be. Yeah, on that's neighbors. that's worth every every penny for me. I mean, I think so. I'm just trying to think. There's the season is very very long, and to have zero fab and Malik Neighbors and Malik Neighbors take dumps now, not later. I mean, that's it, a big dump. It's all that's of a it. huge dump. Let me, you're, you're cleaned out. You, you're cleaned you out, this. but it's worth it. Give me the number, Mike. Um, Brandon Ayuk hits waivers. Yeah, I guess that would be that'd be a full, and that feels the same. Yeah, it feels All the right. same as that. So, uh, let's turn to another voicemail question. Hey, ballers, Tyler Cosmos from uh, New Smyrna Beach, Florida. Fun fact: I actually went to high school with Raheem Mostert when he played for our high school team. Just a quick question: I uh, just lost Puka Nakua to to that injury, and I have a plethora of running backs. I've got Brian Robinson and James Conner on my bench. I had the opportunity to trade for Jameson Williams. I was thinking about offering Robinson. Just wondered what you guys think his value is moving forward and uh, and if that's a, a trade that you would like. All right, I appreciate it, guys. 
That's that's so fine. Question, that's question fine. is, they're trying to trade for Jamison Williams, and they have a, a excess of running backs. Brian Robinson for Jamison Williams is that's super Perfect. duper. That's super duper easy. Super duper. <laughs> I, I heard super, it's super duper. That's super duper. Super duper. Um, you saw Jaden Daniels take two goal line touchdowns this past right. week. So Robinson, that one. As as people say, that's super duper. Yeah. But James Conner, no. no. You no, I would not trade no. James Conner for for James. That would be stupid, doopy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah, I I think it's. I mean, William Jameson Williams is an interesting, like test the waters trading both directions. I mean, if you can get him cheap, get him. If you can get a ton for him, I would do that too. Yeah, like if you can go, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to be able to. Well, maybe people are smarter than this, but <laughs> the Jameson Williams versus the big week one bus type of player is going to be an interesting thing because you could take Jameson and something and maybe you get Brandon Ayuk. Maybe right. that's the trade that you could pull off. Twenty four points in week one, or which is what I think you put up in our league, that's a lot. It's pretty powerful. And it was on an island game that everyone watched. And Brandon Ayuk ticked people off when they spent the draft capital and did nothing. So try to take advantage of that. I by the way Public service announcement, or no? This is just a an announcement of all. Where, where's a button for an announcement? A declaration. I am out of the Kyle Pitts business. Oh. <laughs> he is gone. <laughs> One week only. Oh man! So I drafted him. Yeah. <laughs> and on draft day, I traded him to you. Yeah. No. And whoa! 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 Literally. One round, one round later. Yeah, one round yes. later. <laughs> Mid draft, I drafted him. A round later, traded him to you. Yeah, you got the week one. Yeah, you number one tight end of uh, the drafted tight ends. Yeah, uh, and you traded him away uh, for Dalton Kincaid. I thought it was really well timed. Kincaid uh, was very disappointing, and and like you said, Pitts was the number one tight end of the top twelve drafted tight ends. So that's that's how you capitalize. Anyways, we're moving forward. But I'm so out on Kyle Pitts. Is not, it, not really. I'm not really out on Kyle Pitts. Is it more of a Kirk Cousins concern or a Kyle Pitts concern? I'm, I'm very concerned about Kirk Cousins. I really okay. am. Because uh, Kyle Pitts, again, was 100% yeah, of no, the Kyle, routes. I, I am, this was a pro Dalton Kincaid, and I couldn't have gotten Kincaid for Kyle Pitts at any other time of the year, in my opinion. I think Pitts will be fine. I think Kincaid will be better. So I wanted to go out and do it. And it wasn't straight up. It was pretty close to it, though. I think I, I threw Rashid Shahid in, who had the big week one, and just tried to capitalize. But I thought I'd share that just so you don't associate <laughs> me with Kyle Pitts from this point forward. All right. YouTube question. What are your thoughts on Jonathan Taylor after week one? He had zero targets. Yeah. That was going to be a concern. He was outrushed by Richardson. That was going to be a concern. He did get into the end zone, right? Yeah. My, yeah, 16 for 48 thoughts, with, with the tutty. My thoughts are that you're going to have more variability to, to Jonathan Taylor than you did in years past, but that he's pretty good. Like, I, like I'm assuming, Jason, would you Taylor, Connor, rest of season? I, I would still much rather have Jonathan Taylor. He is the more talented running back. I like the offense. He was out there on 96% of snaps. Yeah, that's great. Um, not every game is going to be good for every player. He is a great player. He's on the field. He will have his his moments. It, 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 we talked about this in the draft season about how he does not have the ability to finish as the number one overall. He, uh, he has the physical ability, but right. in this team, uh, I mean, he's done it before. But for this season, when you have a few goal line vultures and you're not getting the checkdowns from the from the pocket passer, your tippy top upside is ruined. But I think he's going to still be a safe, really good player this season. He plays against Green Bay this week on the road, and then Chicago at home the next two weeks. Uh, two good defenses. We will. It, it is yes. Green Bay is a good good defense, but I'm just I'm very curious how that game script goes out. If Malik Willis is He's the starter, and maybe Malik Willis has improved. But he, what we have maybe seen of, not. What we have seen of him is this is not an NFL starting caliber quarterback. He just got to the team a couple weeks ago. Uh, so, I'm, I so what I'm saying is, I think Jonathan Taylor is going to carry the ball 
a lot as they're salting the game. Yeah, if, if in victories, this is this is the type. Oh, of Oh, you team. guys, you guys are both thinking that uh, that Andy's going to win the ball game. I yes. do. Yeah, I don't. I know you 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 said that uh, yesterday, but I yeah, you guys said they'd be zero two, and then I went and looked at the game, and I was like, I don't think so. Right, but then we looked at the quarterback and said, Oh yeah, yeah. I look uh, who plays quarterback for Pittsburgh. Uh, Justin Fields, yeah. former first round pick. Okay. <laughs> I'm saying. Okay. So because he's a former first round pick, you uh, love him. Malik Willis is bad. Yeah, he has I know. No, like no redeemable quality uh, as a quarterback. I mean, I, I, I'm not even going to hit the almost upset because they're not favored. I mean, the, the Packers are favored in that game, I believe. So uh, I don't even need to defend myself because the the line is set at Andy. Andy's the line. Okay, I've All already right. got the line. Mike's almost upset of the week. <laughs> I, I, it's one and a half, I think. Right? What what is the line? Oh, Colts favored by three. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that makes life really easy. <laughs> Al, if you have the drop, just hit it now. Just hit it. And that way you can get the, the you know, nerves in your tummy, mm -hmm. Jason, because whenever you – there it is. Andy's almost upset of the week. Get ready. Get ready. Packers win. Al, Al, we'll always get on board with that. I love it. It's a great take. Does Malik throw more touchdowns to the – Packers or the Colts? Malik throws one touchdown. To uh, the you, Colts? you want to know the whole game? You want to know the whole score, final yeah, score, I mean, everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Malik throws one touchdown. The Green You're Bay saying to the Packers, though. Nope. I'm okay. saying to his own team. One, okay. one touchdown pass to his own team. He rushes for a second touchdown in okay. the game. They kick three field goals on top of that. Wow. They're okay. On fire. Yeah. Uh, that's, no, that's not that much. That's really not that much. Yeah, it for, is. For, that's 20 for, plus points. Yeah. They're going to score 20, 23 points. And the Green Bay defense at home in Lambeau with the crowd in their first home game are going to stifle Anthony Richardson. He's not going to have the big plays okay. against Jair Alexander. And the final score of that game is 23-13. Just trying, I'm trying to quickly look through. Now, again, different team. I already looked through the almanac, Mike. The No, I'm, I'm saying Malik Willis. Uh, when Malik Willis was the starter, let's see, in 2022 – you, we already did points, this. Seventeen already did points, this. fourteen points. Okay. Go yeah, on. yeah. They turn the they turn the Colts over twice, getting short fields that lead to the uh, touchdown in the field goals. I, I've already seen it. Okay. I've looked into the crystal All ball. Right. Twenty three thirteen Packers. So this isn't really an almost upset. This no, is this just is an upset. this is an yeah, yeah. That's it's done. Do you happen to know if that touchdown goes to Jaden Reed? <laughs> Are you a, <laughs> you asking? It actually no. It goes to one of the tight ends. Oh, oh it's Kraft. So Tucker Kraft gets it. Uh, sorry, and then Malik runs one in. All right. He also throws two picks. They're pretty ugly. The picks are pretty ugly. Okay. Well, now at least we're being reasonable. Um, but they're on deep passes, so it's like a punt. It's not a big deal. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This question comes in from Josh in Connecticut. Hey, guys, in a full PPR, would you rather? Uh, who would you rather have on your roster the rest of the season, Brian Thomas Jr. or Lad McConkie? Uh, I just watched uh, I, Brian Thomas this morning. Brian uh, Thomas absolutely yeah. torched Jalen Ramsey on a couple routes. I, I am there is no bigger Lad McConkey fan. He was on the short list for my guy. I've I've built him up. I I am happy with everything I saw. This is an easy Brian Thomas. I mean Brian Thomas, Lad, Lad McConkey will be a nice PPR option, a flex player this season. Brian Thomas showed me stuff on the field that. I think he's going to be the number one for a you know a downfield threat, a touchdown machine. Brian Thomas could be easily a top twenty four wide receiver this season, but his upside if he hits, I mean, I I think wide receiver one is in the range of outcomes for Brian Thomas. Jaden Reed without love or Brian Thomas versus Cleveland? I would say that one more time. Jaden Reed without Jordan Love, so okay. with Malik Willis, who will lead them to victory. Uh, or Brian Thomas against Cleveland's defense, full PPR. I'm gonna go Brian Thomas. It's, I know I know Cleveland is a, a really good defense, but for all the things I just said, Brian Thomas showed like the one. All right, who should I start in week two? This question comes in from Wet Willie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Chris Godwin oh, against those are so gross. Oh, Wet Willie's. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, it's been many it's decades been a while. since I received a Wet yeah, Willie. Bring that around the office. That is just Let's such a that. gross That's thing. What I mean, it's can so you, disgusting. Can you imagine doing that to a stranger? I mean, that, <laughs> stranger? I feel like you could get arrested. I don't think people do it. I feel it like to you strangers. could get arrested. It, it, 
yeah, if you did it to a stranger, I would not. Now, wait a minute, Al. Tell me what you're saying here. Your dad still thinks they're funny? He does. Yeah, <laughs> he, he does them to my son all the time. Oh, no. Oh. Poor Sawyer. Um, no, but but like, How does he react? With joy? <laughs> no, no, no one is no, joyful. No. They got spit Disgust. in their ear. <laughs> and, I mean, it's a little bit of a punishment to yourself, though, because you're getting... Getting your fingy all waxed. Well, you're yeah. not getting it. Well, you're not going deep, Mike. It's not a deep wet willy. Yeah, but if you're going, I mean, you're going in there, you're coming in. Well, hot you think with you're, saliva. you think you're waxing up? Oh yeah, I yeah. don't think you're waxing. Uh, you, you wet willy. You're not leaving without some wax. <laughs> I, I oh hope, man, I hope you're leaving without wax. I hope no. you're leaving without wax, and I hope you're only giving one. Because if you if you go to do another <laughs> wet willy and you got the wax, that's, that's an a eardrum, real problem. That's an eardrum, Danny. I mean, you can't stick that thing <laughs> no. all the way in. No. And pound the eardrum. That's just banished. Wet willies are banished. Yeah, wet willies feel like a remnant of the distant past. Yes. Al's dad is the last man allowed legally to do it. He's from the final generation of the wet willies. Like, is he like, I'm going to give you a wet willy, see? Like, is that how he talks, too? <laughs> when he does the wet willy, he then makes a paper airplane and throws it around in <laughs> yeah. class. He shoots a slingshot. He sticks shot. some gum under the desk. <laughs> it's some, he, uh, and then he a, heads out for his paper route. I mean, that's what we got sure. going on. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, by Bandish. the way, that question, I think, did I get the question No, out? you didn't. It was just Godwin well, well, versus Lions, Diggs versus Bears. Ooh, I love this question. Diggs coming off of a two-touchdown game for a great offense. The Bears defense, if you haven't caught up yet, the Bears defense is legit. They're very, very, very good. Um, did you want to know what the Almanac says about that game, though? Yeah. Sure. Oh, my gosh. I didn't, the Almanac usually only has one game. Yeah. The Texans are going to pound them. Oh, yeah, that's fine. I can agree with that. Um, I, so I'm going to go Chris Godwin versus the Lions personally. Same. What, what we saw week one, his utilization, trying to keep up with a great offense. Um, you, you saw Stafford, um, you know, have periods of time where he was carving up the secondary. So I, I think Chris Godwin has a good game this week. I, man, that Stafford, you know, Lions Rams game was all over the place. Um, uh, I realized one of the challenges and why Matthew Stafford is so good, but yet not so good, like for fantasy a lot yep. of the time, is because Matthew Stafford can carve your defense up, but the amount of plays it takes. Yeah. Like you you can be amazing nine times, but then get sacked one time on that 10th attempt. This is why you have to go downfield. Yeah, and they're not doing it, and uh, no puka doesn't help. All right. We've got Thursday and Friday, all the matchups for week two. On the podcast, don't miss a minute of it. That is 15 more matchup previews. We got starts of the week. We got the return of the fantasy face-off by popular demand on Friday and a whole lot more. So I encourage you right now, if you want to become a supporter of the show and get uh, a near endless supply of perks, including an extra episode of the podcast, the new Ultimate Dashboard, our Game Day Alerts, our Injury Blitz podcast, our snapshot tools, our stream finder tool, lineup optimization, everything is at jointhefoot.com and you can come along for the ride and uh, ultimately lose to the Falcon in the Megalobowl, apparently. So <laughs> that is it for today's episode of the show. Appreciate it. Shout out to Deucer's Alley, Al Boyle and Papa Josh and the Falcon. Thank you guys. We'll be back tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.